Let's pray one more time. Lord, we thank you right now for your word, that it brings life, Father God, and it brings light in the right places, at the right times, in the right situations. Lord, we ask, Lord, right now that we would have ears to hear what the Spirit would have to say. God, move on us. Father God, give us ears to hear. Father God, give us eyes to see. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone said, amen. amen. James chapter 1. Um, for time's sake, I would love to read the entire chapter. Um, I believe that this is, uh, you know, you have life scriptures in your life, scriptures that just kind of mean something to you. And, um, and I have several of those. Um, but one of these, the one chapter that I feel like I always go back to, that I always feel like I go back to is James chapter one. And specifically, I go back to a lot of times where the testing of your faith produces. And man, that hits me because um, you need to know that anytime your faith is tested, it produces. But you also need to know that everything in your life always produces something. So if you're not tied to your faith, you're still producing something in your life. And uh, so God's just spoke to me in so many occasions about the testing of my faith and, and the perseverance. And, and uh, so I want to go into the scripture, but I want to go, let's just drop down for, for time's sake. Like I said, I, like I want to go through this whole chapter, but let's drop down to verse, um, verse 17. Or let, let actually, let's drop down to verse 14 and we'll read there. He said, but each one is tempted when he is carried away and enticed by his own lust. First of all, you need to understand that sin is not just sin. Sin is an enticement for more sin. Sin doesn't come just on its own. It always brings friends. And when it brings friends, it's from an exposure of the heart. You know, someone doesn't just, you know, I just fell into sin. No, th there was a thought first. The thought seeded and enticed you and then it produced and so understanding that, that a lot of times that we, we, we say things like, well, I just fell into it. Well, you didn't fall into nothing. You, 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 you stepped out of something. So, we, well, I fell out of grace. No, you stepped out of grace. You stepped out of your, your covering. And, and I say that because of what, where we're going to go. So here we go. It says, so but, uh, each one is typically carried around but enticed by his own lust. Then when lust has conceived and he gives birth, remember, because everything gives birth, everything produces, gives birth to sin. And to, when sin is accomplished, it brings forth death. See, the wages of sin is death. And death, you need to understand, and, and, and in context of what it means, the word death means to be separated from and to be alone. So it doesn't mean just, just to be separated from my family. It means to be separated from and alone spiritually. It's what happened to Adam and Eve when they ate of the apple. They immediately realized that they were naked. Why? Because the covering had left. And they realized that he said, when you eat of this, you will surely what? Die. And at that moment, death came into their life and they spiritually died. Because at that moment, God could not be where they were. That's why God had to come looking for him at that moment. Does that make sense? So, so in this context of what we're understanding is that sin has entered our lives. It's been a part of our lives. It's, it's, it's the fall of man. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That we're born into sin. We're born into a life of sin. We're born into a life <clears throat> that, 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 you know, we could, we could say, well, this one was born here and they don't have this. And everyone was born into sin. Everyone has a sinful father. Everyone has a sinful mother. Everyone was born into a world of sin. It's what we do in the world that makes the difference. This is where the difference happens. We have the choice to embrace who we are humanly or spiritually. Naturally or spiritually. Does that make sense? Okay. So he said this. He said, do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good thing bestowed on every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. So, first you need to understand that this, this, this word, this, 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 this thing is saying that who God is, and God is the light. And him in him, there are no shadows. Now, now, when we talk about light, we, we can refer to everything in here. So if you can just hit that black for me real quick. We have the potential to have light. Now, what darkness is, is not, is not less light. It's the absence of light. Darkness is not. So when we have darkness, 
it's not that there's, there's, it's greater than light. It's that light didn't show up. Let me say that one more time. Darkness is not that there was no light or there was no, there, that, that, that darkness had the ability to overcome it, that had the ability to overpower it, is that some way, somehow, there was an absence of light. Does that mean I see people glowing all over this room? Why? Because you have lights on your phones. So you can turn it on real quick. And, and we're going to get to this real quick. I'm going to get ahead of myself. So, he said, every good and perfect bestowed, every perfect gift is coming from the Father of lights, right? The Father of light, with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. This is crazy because it says the Father of light. So then when God said, let there be light, he was saying, let there be me. When he said, let there be light, he said, let there be me. Woo. That's good. That was, that was revelation right there. I'm, I'm going I'm to chew on that just for a second. Whom there is no variation or shifting shadows. Even in this room, as bright as it is, and they could turn it up brighter and make it brighter. Even as bright as we can get it, there are still shadows in this room because there's some object blocking the light to get to the other place. And there's always going to be shadows as long as there's always objects. Except when God turns on the scene. Huh. When he comes on the scene, something begins to shift in the aspect of no longer shifting shadows. There's no longer variations. There's no longer things lacking or things missing. This moment with God, when we allow the light to come, and the, the, and the Proverbs puts it this way, it's the entrance of your word that brings light. Well, that's good. I'm fine. I'll aim on myself. It's fine. <coughs> he said, in, the, exor in the, the exercise of his will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, so that we might be, as it was written, the first fruits among his creatures. This, is, this you know by beloved brethren, but let everyone be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Uh, uh, that's Bible. I can do maybe two, but all three... Quick to hear. Why? Because faith cometh by hearing. Slow to speak. Why? Because the strongest thing you will hear is your own voice. And slow to be angry. Why? Because it's contrary to who God is. God is not angry. He's love. Love disciplines. Uh oh. The better word for this is hate. Slow to hate. Don't be pushed to hate. Don't be pushed to hating on your brother or hating on your sister or hating the situation you're in. Because the moment, this, I told my daughter this the other day, she was telling me something and she said, she said, she said something, she was dealing with something emotional and I, and I looked at her and I said, I said, tell me, tell me what's going on. She goes, nothing. I said, no, 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 that's a lie. And anything birthed out of a lie produces more lies. I'm not saying that you're wrong because you don't want to express it, but don't lie about it. You feel something. Something's happened. That's why he tells us when we worship him, we worship him in spirit and in truth. Because the moment you deny what you feel naturally, you will not be able to be set free spiritually. So there's a lot of times we're not stepping into the next because we're lying about the moment. And we're so focused on, well, I can't, I'm not, well, I'm not, no, no, it's fine. It's fine that you feel insecure. Just know that you don't find your security in yourself. You find it in God. <laughs> we don't, I don't do what I do because I find I'm a secure person. I don't do what I do because I feel confident. I don't, in fact, I just told my wife, I said, I'm sick to my stomach right now. I said, I don't do this because I'm just a confident person. I do this because God called me to do this, told me to do this, and I walk out what he said, not what I I said, hmm. we're not even to the right text here. This you know, beloved brethren, let everyone cook. So, oh, we saw did that. For the anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. That's why. That's why. That's why he wants to be slow to anger because anger doesn't achieve anything. It has no righteousness in it. They're put, putting aside all filthiness and all that remains in wickedness, in the humility received the word, implanted 
which is able to save your souls. Woo. This word is implanted and in it brings deliverance. The implanted word of God brings deliverance. If you want to be set free, you have to implant the word of God into your life because the implanted word brings light. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, then it says here in verse 22, but prove yourselves doers of the word and not merely hearers who delude themselves. The King James Version says, who deceive themselves. I like both words because deception and deluding are the same thing. The thing is with deception, we automatically get in our mind that it's immediately happening. The word delude tells you that it's a gradual process. If I'm deluding something, if I'm deluding, if I, if I, if I was to, to delude something and I don't want the, the, the potency of what it is, the potency of what it can do, all I have to do is add a little bit more water to it and eventually it will start to dilute itself. And if I add enough water to it, it will no longer be the substance it was created for. And so what happens is that a lot of times the diluting of our life doesn't happen just from day one. The diluting happens from time after time after time. But he tells us here how we get diluted. He says, when you're a hearer of the word and not a doer of the word. There's this, there's this thing that my mom, I mean, you see it all over social media now, but my mama used to tell me this, so I said my mama wrote it. Deceived people don't know they're deceived. There's revelation. Some of you are like, whoa. Huh? Deceive, if, if I'm living in deception, I don't know that I'm living in deception. This, this sermon was actually came from, from a, a post we saw, and we, Tracy and I were trying to look where we found it, where we saw it, where was the story at. But there was a kid who, who, who went to uh, his parents and, and it was having headaches, complaining headaches, all this stuff. And um, was, they were getting worse and worse and worse and they'd done everything and they finally decided to take him to the eye doctor. They took the young man to the eye doctor. Um, the dad said that he had always had, they would always go watch movies and this kid would always fall asleep in the movies. Always fall asleep. So they took him to the eye doctor. They get to the eye doctor. They realize and find out that this kid needs glasses. He needs glasses. Never, 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 never complained about not being able to see. Never complained about never being able to see. It just all of a sudden had headaches and said, hey, I need glasses. They come up there. They give him glasses. The prescription is a very high strength prescription. They decide that, they, you know, his life, he just, he just changed. He just started seeing things differently and everything. They go to a movie. They decide to go to the movie. The dad's thinking, we're going to a 1030 movie. For sure, my son's going to be out sleeping again. That's fine. Him and his other son, they'll enjoy the movie, and they'll tell him about the movie later. They get to the movie theater. They sit where they usually sit, towards the back. As they're watching the movie, he notices his son starting to take his glasses off, put his glasses on. Take his glasses off and put his glasses on. And his dad goes, what are you doing? He said, Dad, I've never been able to see the movie. And his dad said, well, why didn't you ever tell me? He said, I thought everyone saw that way. And I started to think about how many of us don't realize we're actually blind in scenarios of our life because we haven't stopped to see the doctor. We haven't stopped to ask something different. <laughs> We haven't bothered to step out of what's been told to us all our lives. I, I've talked to people since we've been here. I've met some of you in this room. I've talked to you and about how you talk about how the Jesus you found now. Like if I would have known the Jesus I know today, if I'd have known Jesus I know right now in this moment, my life would have been totally different. But you don't realize it until you see it. You don't, you don't recognize it until, it, oh man, aha, wow. God, don't drink. There it is, revelation. <laughs> right? And, and I started to think about the process. So here, here's what it says. If you, if, you, if you hear the word, but you don't do the word, you dilute it. For everyone who is a hearer of the word and not a doer is a man like who looks in the natural face in the mirror and then forgets who it is. Let me, let me read it the way it says. For anyone who is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks at his natural face in a mirror 
For once he has looked at himself and gone away, he has immediately forgotten what kind of person he was. Mm. So I brought a mirror. I told Pastor Josh I needed this black thing on there because I didn't want y'all looking at yourselves the whole time. Oh, that bright. It's bright right there. Well, that kind of goes into my sermon, so give me one second. This mirror, to reflect anything, can you just bring the lights, just all of them, just down a little bit so we don't blind everyone? There we go. This mirror, to reflect anything, requires light. For you to see yourself Light has to be present. Not just that, for me to see in the mirror, it can, light must be present. And they call it, they call it, this is, this is the science behind it. It's called the incident. The incident is the object that is standing in front of the mirror that has the light reflecting off of it. Must be in the same angle as the ref, light reflecting off of the, the mirror. So when the reflection happens, what it does is it's not the light, watch this, it's not the light hearing the mirror that reflects the image. It's the object reflecting light that reflects. It's not, it's not the light being exposed to the mirror. Let me just put it in a way you understand. It's not about these pages just jumping off of me. It's about these pages shining to me. <laughs> it's about the implanted word of God in my life. And I started to think, I'm gonna turn this around so I don't mess you up too much. I started to think about different things. And one of the things that I started to think about is we have different, we, cut, we, we use in lights and stuff like that, we use these things called filters. And um, sin, we, on, we understand sin. Sin has an, an object, it, it, can't, it really can't, it can't receive light. It has nothing. It's black. It's dark. We know that. We understand that. If I was to put this here and have you look, you couldn't see yourself because it blocks the reflection. We understand that. We understand that. We understand that sin blocks the reflection. We understand that denial. It's not just a river in Egypt. <laughs> denial. Denial. When you're, when you're denying that you have a problem. You know that. You know, you know when someone's denying something, you're like, that person, look, if they would just get it right, they just in denial. Their kids ain't that great. You know, yeah, I've seen y'all. <laughs> you know, it does, it does allow some light to come through, but not enough. You can't see. You know that if I was to put this in front of the mirror, you would never be able to see yourself. Your past. It's dark. It's murky. I put brown because... It's muddy. And, and, and I started to realize that a lot of times what we try to do is allow our, our past. And if I allow myself to use this as the filter for my light, you feel me now? If I allow it to try to, it won't, it won't allow, it won't, it, won't, it won't allow me to see the reflection that I need to see. So when I read this word, I can't read it From the object of my past. And this word can't read me when I'm dealing it with my. So just because it happened yesterday doesn't mean it needs to happen. And can I say that past is past? This doesn't say good or bad. Well, we used to. Well, you used to. What's God, he said, I'm doing a new thing. Have you not yet perceived it? So you're used to needs to get in line with what he's doing now. Oh, so revival's about to <laughs> hurt. I used hurt because we always call it church hurt. You can see light through it. It can filter the light. You know there's light there, but I'm hurt. I'm offended. And if I try to read the word with hurt as an object, I may be able to, may be able to make out something. But it still filters and all I see is my hurt. Mm. We, about to, we about to go somewhere, don't worry. Go to 
complacency, being complacent, being okay. I'm just, I come to church. I'm here on Sundays. I'm on Dream Team. I even do nursery. You, come on, you better get revival should stir, right? I'm just kidding. <laughs> but if we allow ourselves to be complacent, though it allows light to come through, we never be able to see the word for what it is. Familiar. That's just the way we've always done it. That's just the way. Brother Chris, uh, he, I see it. That's just. But you cannot. Even, even, even because we had a, a great service last week, we can't take that familiar thing from last week and expect to read the word of God this week. Revelation's revelation. And it's always going to be revelation. But the moment it's revealed, start seeking the next thing that God has for you, what he's speaking to you, because he has enough word to cover every basis of your life. Mm. Then we start to get into to other things. And, 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 and I started to think about all these. And I started thinking about like my spouse. That's a good thing, right? She's my helpmate. But I can't read my word through her. Though there's some kind of illuminance, there's some kind of, it still diffuses or filters out what the word of God's supposed to do. I can put this here and you still cannot make out who you are. Because God didn't tell you to read this word for her. He told you to read this word for you. Amen. You didn't hear that. We are so bad about reading the word of God for other people. We come to church and hear a sermon and we're like, oh, that my man and my wife gets this. No, you heard that word. God spoke to you. God told you, well, we're, quick to, we're, quick, we're quick to put it on someone else. But the thing is, is this is still a filter. This still, even though it has the ability to show some light, it's never been created. It was never created to be in front of you in the word. Mm. Family. We, we, we do. Softball, baseball, football. You follow what I'm saying? We get so caught up in, I'm like trying to, should have brought Tracy up here. We get so caught up in trying to filter out that we, that we can't see the reflection because, and, and though it has the ability, light can come through it, but this is not, this is not how I find my source. This is not how I find who I am. This is not how I define who God is for my life. This one hurt. You're calling. Oh, it hurt. Because we can be so, so, oh, well, I'm called. Oh, oh, I'm looking at intercessors. Oh, I'm, I'm an intercessor or a, or a kids worker. Oh, I'm a kids worker. Or, or oh, oh I, I work at a church. Or, oh, I'm on staff. Oh, I'm a pastor. And we can go on so much labels. But I'm telling you, I don't read this word because I'm a pastor. I read this word because I'm a Christian. I read this word because it illuminates something to me. It changes my heart. It changes my mind. It changes my family. The I mentality. When God gave me this, I thought to myself, well, God, you're contradicting yourself because I need to read the word for, for me. He said, yeah, but you always read the word with I. And it's about us. You're reading it with the mentality that, well, I, 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 just, I, need, I just need breakthrough here and I just need this and I just need that and I just want this and I just need more calling and I need more anointing and I'm to do this and I'm supposed to do this and I'm supposed to do that. He said, and what you've done is you've become the same thing that Satan was and you've allowed pride to come into your life and your eye is getting in the way. You've allowed yourself to get in the way and it filters. This is the same complex that Moses had. He said, who tell them that I sent you? And he said, well, who am I? Who am I? What about me? What about what God you want to do in me? What about me? And I started to recognize that we look at these as filters, but these are actually veils.
the light is the light. See, see, we 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 think that this word is meant to just to to just illuminate the pages off to us. But he says, if you hear the word, if you read it, is you're looking like a man that's looked in the mirror and forgot who he was, forgot his nature, forgot his calling, forgot. Don't do that. Forgot what God said in him. Forgot what God placed in him. And, and when we do, what we do is we, we get so caught up in the I mentality that we lose grip on what God's really called us to. Before he called me to be a pastor, he called me to be a son. You didn't get that. Before he ever called me to preach the word, he called me to read his word. So that I would know who I am and I would know what I belong to and I know what the truth is and what, how it can set me free because I can't preach to you somewhere I've never been. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians, it's my favorite scripture, 317. Now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom but not to be undone with verse 18. And now we all with unveiled faces reflect. This illumination happens because the veil. The veil was torn. It didn't matter how familiar or how whatever, the Bible says he tore it from the top to the bottom so that no one would get the glory but God. The veil was torn. The veil was in place so that we would know that, hey, there's a marker. I can't go past this point because I'm not good enough. But God said, hey, you're not good enough, but my blood is good enough. My blood is perfect enough. My blood is capable enough. And he said, it doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter who you thought you were, what you think you were, what you were lacking, or what you were missing. There's a God that saved you. There's a God that redeemed you. And there's a God that died for you. And the veil has been torn so when we stand before the Lord we stand with the ability to reflect his glory when I read this word I don't read it with the mentality of how to fix someone I read this with the mentality that it's fixing me it's fixing me. I've missed it. Jack, I've missed it. I've done stupid things. I've said stupid things. But then all of a sudden I watch what grace can do. And it doesn't come from someone coming and saying, hey, you got this and hey, you can do this. It doesn't even come from the support of my wife. It came from the blood that was shed for me, the blood that's more than enough. It came from the name that's above every other name, that at that name of Jesus, every knee. Listen, let me tell you something. I want you to understand. All these letters are red letters. Red letters are not just in the gospel and revelations. Every single one of these were stained with the blood. The word was, the word is, and the word is to come. So whatever you need, whatever place you need it, God wants to do it. God wants to give it. God wants to bring it. God wants to set you free. Let's stand. I feel deliverance in the house. I feel freedom. I feel it. That sound we hear is chains falling. Prison doors opening. Lights coming on. And here's what I want to do. Just, just we're gonna just, come on, Pastor Matt. We're just gonna take five minutes. There have been obstacles in your way. I hit everybody. 
I hit myself. There's filters that we put on. This veil was torn, but we decided to put it back on for whatever reason. We're so good about trying to tape back the pieces. We're so good about trying to come back and put back what God never intended to be together. I didn't tear very well. We're so good. Oh. Well, I don't think about all my past. But that's enough to block your vision. I thought this, I thought I had this picture today. Some of us can't see us doing God's work because we're looking at our hands through the filter of our past. I'm never going to be on a microphone because you don't know where I've been. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful that the calling is not about you it's about him Moses could have looked there and said I've killed the person David could have said do you not know what I've done we have different people I I preached uh, Sunday on Rahab Rahab she was a harlot however you want to classify that as that's what she did she lived a life that way But isn't it good, isn't it great to know that the blood, haha, the blood covers it all. The blood, what? I misspoke. The blood washes it all white as snow. It doesn't cover it, it removes it. It doesn't cover it, it forgets about it. It doesn't cover it, it takes us as far as the east is from the west and says no longer, no more, not today and not ever. Oh, Jesus. So if you're here and there's been a filter and you're ready to step into the new, I keep hearing that today, to step in to the new, the new you, the new you. Don't wait for 2024 to come for you to make the resolution. Resolve it right now in your mind. You know what resolution means? It actually means it's a, it's a synonym of the word revolution. You can't have a resolution without having the mindset of a revolution. And if you don't want, if you want to get to the next level, you're going to have to fight to get there. You're going to have to push through some things. You're going to have to step over some dead bodies and step over some dead things in your life. And you're going to, Lazarus, when he came out of the grave, his grandma was in the grave, his grandpa was in the grave, there were other people in the grave. But God called his name. And when he called his name, he had to step over some dead things to get to the living thing. Oh. So here's what we're going to do. They're going to worship as they worship. If that's you and you say, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. I'm ready to be unveiled. I'm ready to see it for what it is. I'm ready to step. If you're looking for new depths in God, today's the day. I want you to make your way up to the front right now. Come on. Come on. That's you. Come on. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Come on. Yeah. 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 That's it. That's it. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Sing it out. Yes, you. Let me get some altar workers behind them. Come on, just put your hands on them. Just start to pray life into them. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. Yes, you.
we're closing here. I know we got school tomorrow. I'm so grateful for pastors that love Jesus. I know they're not here, but before we close, can we just lift up our hands and just give God glory and praise for our pastors? And let's pray. Lord, we thank you right now for Pastor Daryl and Donna. We thank you for the gift, Father God, they are to us, Lord. But we ask that you would keep them in perfect peace as their mind stays on you, Lord. We pray a blessing over Pastor Donna as it's her birthday, that you will do exceedingly, abundantly, beyond, above anything she could ask, dream, imagine, or fathom, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the call, Father God, of Central Church. We thank you, Father God, for our kids' department, our youth department, Father God, our parking lot, our ushers, our dream team, Father God, our intercessors, our prayer warriors, Father God. We thank you for our prayer teams, Father God. God, be with the prayer teams, Father God, as they're going into the trenches, Father God, and going into the front line and causing, Father God, life to come back to what it is. They're leading people into life change, Lord. So Lord, we thank you for what you're doing in this house. We thank you for the anointing and the freedom, Father God. We thank you for both campuses, Lord, Father God. We thank you that Sunday will not be just a regular Sunday but it'll be a life giving life altering Sunday that people that have been waiting to hear your voice would hear it clearly Lord Father God we strip the veil off ourselves and we allow the entrance of your word to bring light Father God and expose the darkness Father God darkness can't hide it has to go in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we pray we give you all the praise we give you all the glory because your name is great in Jesus name we pray and everyone said Amen.